that we can be quick so that we allow more colleagues. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, my uh, additions and inquiries to the Ministry of Finance as it came on board to clarify some matters, we wish to know why didn't it clarify on the matters of compliance. In the Marine report, it was clear and it was reported that there was no quantifiable estimation given. And under part, that's under 2.2, .2, where the committee is reporting that there was no compliance as per Schedule 3 of the PFMA. We are also seeing a rep uh, also a report to us that there was also under 2.4, the Charter of Fiscal Compliance was not responded to. So could we have those clarifications as the ministry is reporting? And finally, concerning the local government sector and public service, as the committee was reporting, the committee, we gave them several issues. And when we talk about compliance and ways of ensuring that we increase uh, the fiscal feasibility in this country, matters of local governments are key. If in the request we put as committee of local government and public service, we, we put forward several issues that can aid this country to have a better service delivery mode. Matters of issues of ensuring that our local leaders out there are well inducted. Now we are talking about five years. We are talking about the year 24, 25 to the year 28, 29. But not anywhere was it incorporated. When we talk about the infrastructure of local governments, nothing was catered for and was captured and many other issues. So in summary, Mr. Speaker, I'm requesting once again that the matters that were put forward by the Committee of Public Service and Local Government, that urgent need to be incorporated and taken care of within the next two years or as urgent as in the next budget, let them be incorporated in the budget framework paper such that local governments can deliver better in this country. I beg to submit. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Um, I'm in support of the minority report in regard to this budget. One, Right Honorable Speaker, the issue of unrealistic budgeting, especially on the side of revenues. And I think this is the very reason as to why in every financial year, we find that there are so many projects that are not implemented, so many projects, and the same is, the same is happening this very financial year. So, Right Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Finance should be realistic when giving us some of these figures. Otherwise, I still submit that the budget figures that are provided are very unrealistic on the side of re revenues and the resource envelope. Right Honorable Speaker, the investment profile of this country, there is a very big difference between the National Development Plan and what we indicate in our budget framework paper. So I would implore the Minister of Finance, kindly respect these national development plans that we make. There is a very big variance between our plans and our budgets. The other thing is about borrowing. Right, Honorable Speaker, we, it's not that we don't support borrowing, but can the Minister of Finance explain why we have 14.5 trillion and disbursed loans? Can he also explain why government of Uganda in the financial year 22-23 borrowed money close to $739 million to support recurrent expenditure, payment of salaries, and these others? So it's not that, that borrowing is bad, but the investment. We invest money in non-productive sectors. So kindly invest our resources in areas that are productive. Right, Honorable Speaker, we have a challenge in costing of government projects. We include projects in these plans that are not costed. That is why you find variances between output and, and, and planning. So we should employ agencies to ensure that every time we do these plans, at least we have a basis for why we include some of these figures. Right Honorable Speaker, they've just amended the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act. I want us to interest ourselves in that, in that act that has just been, the regulations that have just been amended. There are so many issues that have been put there but procurement has become a challenge. Not that the, the cadres are a problem, but also this, this political influence. You saw the issues of the Mabati, where we have blue notes from the ministers, from the president,
to officers, can we start respecting institutions of government such that we can discipline officers who have not executed on their mandate? Right, Honorable Speakers, we should respect institutions of government. Lastly, right, Honorable Speaker, the issue of domestic areas. What, what, what every year, these accumulate, and at a very high rate, what is being done on accounting officers that always accumulate areas? What has the Minister of Finance done? in the line of efficiency and effectiveness in public expenditure. The Minister of Finance is number one in failing to follow the charter of fiscal responsibility when it comes to planning. So for me, in future, I would move that Honorable Msas and his colleagues are put to order in regard to failure to comply to your own charter of fiscal responsibility, financial indiscipline, especially within the Minister of Finance. This thing of supplementary budget, yeah, every year. We have supplementary budgets here. And he's the one who used to always come here and say, oh, we shall never have a supplementary budget. Then the next year comes, you are the one to come to this place. So me, me, Honorable Musasi and colleagues should be put to order to know that they should respect Ugandans when it comes to budgeting. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Now, uh, you, squeeze, you squeeze Honorable Musasi after you thank me. <laughs> I'm not the one who deployed her honorable. <laughs> this was so, yes. Uh, I'm still on opposition side. Please, yes. Uh Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. Right on speaker. We have praised the late honorable Cecilia Guan for helping when we, we had situations of minority report and the majority by looking into both and getting out the best. This is not a time of competition between minority and majority. I have been here for some time. I hear us pass budgets and when you go out there, whenever citizens' priorities are not seen, they don't bash the Ministry of, of Finance, they bash the members of parliament. They don't talk about the president. They don't talk about the minister. They say, these MPs. You'll find other DCs on radio saying the MPs are not prioritizing agriculture. They're not prioritizing roads. And the minister will be happy in his home. So when we come, we talk about priorities. It is because we interact with the people down there. It is not because we are, we are government or we are, we are opposition. It is because we are representatives of members of parliament. Because how do I explain that I have a road that was bridged in 1989 and it is never worked on, but I am passing budgets every financial year? How do I go to where and explain that? Because the priorities are not being set by us, parliament. They are being set somewhere, and for us, we, we have to just approve. And then when we go there, they say they are the appropriators. Even find the minister telling the, the public that it is these MPs that are the appropriators. So, Honorable Minister, please listen to us. It's not because we are against anybody. And that's why I would wish that we look at the minority report and the majority report and we get out the best for our people. It's not about the competition of the two ideas and the two reports. And that's why we are talking about Cecilia Guar. Now we have even forgotten about what, what she was doing here, even before an, uh, uh, a week. Of course, for you, are a listening post. So I know you will not talk about UPDF. So, but the point I'm making is we are the eyes and the ears of our people, and therefore, let's look at these reports and get out the best for our people. And that's the point I'm making. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, one of the major goals of the PFP is to accelerate economic growth. And that is increasing the quantitative output of our country. My biggest concern is on the drivers of our economic growth. Because if you look on top of the list, we have the parish development model. And the big focus here is that they are telling us investing money in the parish development model will quickly transform our economy. And that's where I find the problem. Especially when I go back to the seven pillars that we are given. 
Right now, the big focus is on two pillars, mindset change and uh, financial literacy. And that's how they are grouping people into circles. And the Ministry of Finance is telling us that the biggest driver of our economy and transforming the people of Uganda is parish development model. And that's where I want to defer that our level of investment into any sector should be dependent on the return to investment. We have so many options as a country where we could put money and get a better return to investment. And that's where we need to, to focus. There's a total mismatch in terms of investment expenditure on return to investment. And then the other issue, right, Honorable Speaker, I moved a minority report last year and the focus was, was on these debts that we keep accumulating. My prayer was for the Minister of Finance to provide the financing options at this particular stage, precisely indicating to us where is our country going to borrow money? What are the terms and conditions of this money lenders because if we do not do that at this stage we're going to find ourselves in a position of the amarok the one that was rejected previously we're going to find ourselves in a position of going to standard chartered uh, that organized group of lenders that we are supposed to borrow money from our country paid money expecting to get money, and the money never came. We suffered a loss as a country because we lacked planning. And that's why um, I'm urging government, when we are doing this budget process, especially at this stage, it, will, it is paramount for us to know the source of the money. It's true we all agree that we have to borrow, because if you look at our budget, 22% has to be debt. But please be precise to the country. Tell us where are we going to borrow? What are the terms? What are the conditions of this money leader? So that we put ourselves in a better position running our country. Thank you, Right Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Aisha, then Honorable Cooper. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Chair. I want to thank the Budget Committee. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg your pardon for the two reports. Um, in relation to the conclusion, uh, I, I speak in, on ground of the conclusion of the minority report, where I said that if the report cannot be thrown out because of the irregularities, then it should be amended accordingly. And that's the ground that informs my submission. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the minister was short of informing us, which was a question in the minority report, what led to the decreased revenue uh, expectations where revenue collection increased even around time COVID period, but this time increase in revenue collection is significantly low. That answer was not submitted to us. Not to ever overemphasize, but just to amplify the need for getting the sources sources of date. Uh, failure to submit sources of date is. Uh, supplying air because i am sure by this time finance exactly knows where they are going to borrow this money from but they are not disclosing suppose they are they come and make proposals here and parliament rejects so we need to know the sources but most importantly on page 62 of the major report there is a request to inject more money into human vaccine i record right honorable speaker that previously we have injected money into science and technology and especially in the invasion of, of discovery of vaccines. And we have never received any report. Year after year, we are putting money into vaccines. We have had even other countries have been able to come out with vaccines like COVID vaccines. Despite the money that we put there, we have not been able to get anything. Uh, the report talks of retooling. I'm actually dismayed that the report talks of retooling 
external security uh, organization offices. While the report defers retooling of uh, teachers, especially at this time when we go into, into the new curriculum. Right, Honorable Speaker, many of our teachers, especially those of us that come from rural areas, actually some teachers have given up because they say what they don't understand what they are teaching. Teachers have not been retooled, the new curriculum is on. Besides, the students are required to go and do their own research. But in schools, there is no electricity. In schools, there are no computers. We require that their parents will buy the laptops probably, but we know many parents are unable. Some internet, I'm told, is expensive. We know that. Some parents are risking giving their children phones to be able to do research, but we know all the risk of a phone to a child because they are tempted into going into social media. This budget does not speak to that. And uh, right honorable speaker, page 73, we talk about uh, solving. Yeah. As I conclude, let me conclude that point, just oh, that point. But you've allocated yourself more time. Thank you. you say, no, you can't switch on for more time before you're given permission. <laughs> Let's conclude, honorable. Uh, thank you, right honorable speaker. Um, the, page 73 talks about uh, helping the young, the being able to stop early, early pregnancies to girls. The report talks about the figures of girls that have become pregnant and say in order to address this, then they talk about skilling. These are two different things. The, the problem spoken about, the objective is different from the cure. When you talk about skilling the pregnant girls, that does not solve the girls so solve the problem of other girls being pregnant. So I find the objective and the solution communicating two different things. Uh, thank you, Chair. I rested at that. Thank you. Honorable Cooper, then Honorable Mpuga, Honorable Santa, Honorable Chivundi. And then again, go back. 